what I'm doing is we went ahead and applied our second coat of filler. We're going to go over that in a minute. But what I'm doing up here, I'm taking my dowel sander. You can see that right there. And you noticed I'm doing this by hand. I'm not using any air tools or machines. And this has got a curve in it. So we can't use a flat block. And we definitely can't use our hand because if we use our hand, it's going to leave grooves where we have our bondo, it's going to leave grooves from our fingers. It doesn't matter which way you go, there's going to be grooves that will be uneven. So what we got here, we got this round dowel, and I got 36 grit on here. And what I'm doing, I'm concentrating on the outer edges, but sanding the middle at the same time, because what I want to do, I want to feather that out. So if I take my sander, I'm going to put more pressure on the outside of it than I am on the middle. And what that's going to do, that's going to feather our Bondo out on the edges, but we're still going to leave our filler in the middle. If you notice, I'm holding my, see how I'm doing that? I'm holding it up like this where the pressure's on the outside, but the sander's still catching the middle. And now, there was a big dent here, so that was our first filler that was our first uh, pass of Bondo. And what we'll do now is we'll come back and do our final filler, Bondo filler, uh, which I call the flow coat. And then we will rough it up using this, but we'll finish it with 80 grit, and then it'll be primer ready. I'll go ahead and repeat my process on all the stuff along the top here, uh, working by hand to do that. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So as I was saying, I went ahead and applied my filler, my flow coat. The first coat we call a filler coat. That's what I call it, okay? You just kind of rough it in there. You make sure that it... Uh, adheres to the metal and and make sure that your metal is prepped properly using 36 grit just like I showed you and then once you're done with that you let that dry then you come back and you put we'll call this our flow coat now if you did your first coat properly this should be the last and final coat of Bondo that you have to apply Now, the first coat of Bondo that I put on, it is not a finished coat. It is a filler coat only. That means I put it on thick, just like you're watching. Uh, it's a filler coat. I'm filling it in, people. That's all we're doing. This is going to help us find our highs and lows, okay? And you're going to see that. Um, I think this is a little bit too thick, so I'm going to come back and I'm going to skim it. I'm going to take some of that off and use it elsewhere. I think we got way too much filler on this section here. So if you take a look at that, I want you to use the light to look at. You can see that that is coming out really, really nice. And all that is is a filler coat. By using our plastic honey, you can see how our Bondo has started to level itself out and start to um, create its own filler uh, example for us. But you can see, by using our filler, we have leveled all that imperfection stuff out. And we're ready to start uh, taking our roadmap and, and getting this job done. Okay, so what we have done, we have removed 80% of the Bondo that we applied. 
Now you can understand why I said that was a filler coat. That was not a finished coat. All we did was fill in all the low spots and try to level everything out the best we can get it. Now it's not our finished coat. And I'm going to get to that when I get to that. But what this is, this is our last and final, what can I say, big coat of Bondo that we're going to apply. Now a lot of this is going to come off. Most of this will come off. You're going to see that as we sand it. Um, remember we had that issue going on right here where it was welded together and then there was that weld right here. So when we get done with this, it won't look like that. But you can see I had to fill a big area in because I want to be able to feather everything out and flow everything in. Does that make sense? So we're going to feather all this out, flow it all in, and a lot of this is going to be uh, removed and, and then we'll only keep what we need to fill in what is bad. Now, this is the other problem we have. When I mixed up my Bondo, you saw how I used the plastic honey. I went ahead and doubled the plastic honey. That means I put twice as much in my Bondo mix and then what that did, that made it where this is more creamier, it's going to flow better, it's going to, to, to settle more evenly you might say and that is going to give us the situation where we call that a flow coat because by mixing the Bondo that way we made it where it will all flow out and settle properly as it's drying. We want to be real careful around this corner right here. We don't want to use that going around this corner because it will cut grooves in it. Um, and then we're going to be real careful around this area here. We don't want to uh, take too much out because we want to use this as a flow coat. And then once we do that we're going to move to our other tool. <laughs> glaze coat. Now I think I said it backwards. Um, as your Bondo is turning white that's the high spot and then if you see dark spots in it where there's still a glaze to it like over here or over here that means that that is a low spot. So if you look in that area right here you can see that is a low spot. All right we went ahead and hit that with our sander and it looks like it goes to all if you read your road map it goes all the way down. All the way down you can see here's a low spot. It's, it's pretty low right in here and then it goes this way and it's still low here because you can see the imperfections of the dark spots as we travel down the quarter panel. Now this is because he replaced this. Remember that? I was telling you how they replaced that and if they would have replaced it down here instead of way up here it would have been a lot better but he did do a good job on it. I think that the uh, replacement of that panel was in excellent condition, but my opinion is they shouldn't have used all that and they should have only used what they needed. And that's how I do it. What happens is when you're welding this together, when you're welding your two seams together, it stretches and shrinks this metal and it warps it. So that's what this is from right here and uh, that's a common thing when replacing panels. But let's go ahead and see uh, where we lead as we finish out uh, this big spot here of uh, Bondo that we have to flow out. So the next tool that we're going to use, um, we have to break this down in this area here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this sander right here. This is called a, a dual action DA sander. And this is not a finished sander. This is a sander that you would use to rough in like I'm doing or rough a surface up for putting this on or stuff like that. This is not made for a finish sander. This is a dual action long throw. I think I uh, mentioned that but if I didn't now you know. So I'm just going to take this. I got some used 36 grit on here and all I'm going to do is just clean this up and kind of remove some of the high spots that we don't want. 
you can see that's basically all we needed to do to that. So what we have here is an industrial style air file. This is made by a company called Viking. This is a Viking air file. It's the best air file on the market. Don't be fooled by any other brand. This is the top-notch 100% authentic Viking air file right here. I have had this for almost 35 years. I actually have two of them. And I have had this rebuilt probably twice from the Viking manufacturer. I send it in, they rebuild it, and they send it back to me. So what this is going to do, this is a air board. This is a, a file board. You can see it's nice and flat. Another thing about owning one of these is you should always keep your pad in super excellent condition. I'm going to go ahead and take this off, and I'm going to show you what I mean. You can see how nice and flat that is. Uh, my pad can use a little cleaning to remove some of the stick-on debris, but other than that, this pad is in excellent condition. If you're using an air file and the pad is uh, ripped or torn, or it's not in super flat shape, you're screwing yourself. This is not the finished sander that we're going to use for this. All we're doing, we are still forming and molding our bodywork as we are restoring our bare metal car. Remember, this is about restoring a car in bare metal. We started out explaining that. This does not have epoxy primer on it. You don't need epoxy primer. Anybody that tells you that is wrong. They don't know what they're talking about. And it is 100% okay to do exactly what I'm doing that I've been doing all my life by applying our Bondo on top of bare metal. This does not have epoxy primer on it. You don't need epoxy primer. Anybody that tells you that is wrong. They don't know what they're talking about. And it is 100% okay, 100% okay to do exactly what I'm doing that I've been doing all my life, all my life, all my life by applying our Bondo on top of bare metal, bare metal, bare metal, bare metal. So keep that in mind. Don't listen to anybody that says that I'm doing it wrong because I'm not. What I have just done is applied some 36 grit. This is file board paper, 36 grit. We are going to air file our Bondo area. Remember, we, we, we took the glaze off and now we need to break it down, we need to form it, and we need to get rid of everything we don't want. Um, I also mentioned that there was a low spot right in here. I'm thinking I'm going to have to add a little bit more, but you know what? I might be wrong because our air file is going to tell us the story of yes or no on that situation because we still have a lot of filler on this to remove. Okay, so what we just did, we used our air file, we air filed that down, we got a nice flat surface going on here, and you can see I'm rubbing that bare metal with my hand. It's not rusting out. I've actually, this is actually day three on this, people. I didn't know if I told you that or not. This isn't all happening in, in one day. This is actually day three, and this is a week later from when we first started, because I had other stuff to do around the shop. So when I applied that, I'm going to go back in time. When I applied this coat of Bondo, this was actually last week, so it's been drying for approximately four days, four or five days, but I've only been working on it for three days. I want to go ahead and tell you about applying your second coat. You should wait at least, at least an hour and a half to two hours before you start block sanding this. You should let that Bondo cure 199% before you start block sanding that. Don't only wait 30 minutes like we did on our first coat, 20, 30 minutes. 
couple hours, you're, you should be ready to go. The colder it is outside, the longer you should wait. Like I said, this was done last week, and you can see how nicely it's feathered out. Look at this. I mean, it just looks really, really, really nice. There's no cracked edges around it. There's no flaking off. There's nothing that's peeling off. You don't see any peeling or flaking anywhere, and it is feathering out very, very nicely, and it looks very, very uniform and, and usable. So what we'll do now, before I start hand sanding, I am going to go ahead and put a little bit more filler, Bondo, I'm sorry, on top of where I see my low spots, and then we're going to come back and we're going to hand sand this and get her done. Okay, we went ahead and applied our filler right in this area. I've told you there was possibly a low spot over here. I know there was a low spot here and right here. And then I went ahead and added a little more uh, Bondo in this area just so I can feather this out a little more. So let's go ahead and move forward. Now what I want to do, I'm going to repeat my process on this. I'm going to go ahead and get that glazing, uh, that glaze off of there, the glaze coat. And we're going to use our DA sander with some used, this is used uh, 36 grit paper. <laughs> So now we're going to go ahead and repeat our process using our air file to get all this leveled out like we want it. On this corner over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my DA sander and remove the glazing coat that is on this area right here. Okay. We are now done using our air tools. We are now done using our air tools. I said that twice. From here on out, now we might use our DA sander just a little bit, but from here on out, we will not be using any more air files, no more Bondo Busters, nothing. Everything that we do now is by hand only. This is going to give us the accurate finish that we want on our Bondo, and it's going to help us feather everything out and get everything level just like we want it. So the sander that we're going to use is this right here. This is called a speed file. You can purchase these. They are made by a company called Hutchins. And you can still purchase this. And I like this speed file. It's super flat. Alright. But it's not, it's not firm enough where it won't flex. And that's what we want. Do you see that? You want to be able to have a flexible hand sander, lightweight, and something that is going to sand this accurately so we don't have to keep adding Bondo and adding Bondo, taking it off, adding, taking it off, adding, and that's what hand sanding is going to achieve for us, that we will not have to keep adding Bondo to the dents and wasting material. So I'm going to cross sand, I'm gonna, while I'm pushing like this, I'm pulling. You see what's going on there? Pulling, pulling and, and pushing at the same time. Pulling and pushing. That feels really nice. I like that. 
I got to get my other sander to finish it out, and then we're ready to go ahead and finish this up. So this is another style of sander that I like to use. Um, it's not as big as the one we were just using, and it's also a two-handed job, as you can see. Very, very accurate sander. Um, I don't know if you can purchase these anymore. Uh, they're kind of rare to find. R&H Products, uh, that's who made this. This is a number 7004 block sander. And this is very, very handy. So as you can see, everything that we do from here, like I said, is going to be hand sanding only. Let's go ahead and get this prepped out. And we still got to do this section over here before we can uh, go any further. So let's go ahead and finish sanding this. I'm going to use this little sander over here in this area. We're going to go ahead and finish sanding this. We're going to get that fender well and then we are going to finish this out and it will be primer ready. And what's good about this sander, you can use it as a one-handed sander where you can rest your arm you see how I'm doing that? I'm resting my arm on there, so I'm getting full force on the whole panel. Okay, to finish out our little action going on here, what I'm going to do to get this in proper condition is I'm going to use my dowel sander one more time. This is just a round dowel. Now you can use a piece of wood if you want. This is actually a Durablock dowel sander and it is a little bit flexible. It's not really that flexible but this is what I got to use. Like I said you can use a round wood dowel if you want to. Just something that will match the contour of this. You don't need fancy block sanders people. There's a lot of companies out there selling these high-tech block sanders that they, they're telling you to buy and all this made out of plexiglass and, and, and just, you know, thingamajig rigs, and, and you don't need all that. Don't spend all your hard-earned money or your money in your piggy bank on some block sanding kit that you don't need. If you've noticed, I'm using simple tools here, and the job's going to be excellent. Okay, we're going to take our dowel, and I'm going to go ahead and sand this. And the reason I'm sanding this with a dowel is because it's round. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, I'm going to push, and, and, and I'm pushing and pulling at the same time. go ahead and take another sand block that I got. This is a rubber, flat rubber sanding block. I've probably had this since I was a teenager. And I'm going to go ahead and sand this, at this front lip right here, the front face of our fender well. And you can see how that's coming out. I like that. I don't know if you can see that from your angle, but right here, it needs more filler in this area. Um, this is where it was welded, right here. So when I take my block sander and I'm keeping it flat like this, and I sand that out, and I also see that this is round, this is already molded, but one more thing I'm looking at that's more important than it is this piece of metal showing right here. That's telling me that that's a high spot and this is a low spot. You can see where it's not squaring up when we sand it. Now, a lot of people, what they would do on that, what a lot of people would do, they would take a hammer and then tap that in. We don't need to do that. Because I'm telling you, you can see that it feathers out nice over here. But on this side, there's still a dip. So we don't want to take hammers to it if we don't have to. In this situation, we don't have to take anything to that. Okay, for our final coat of Bondo, or filler, whatever you want to call it, we are using glazing putty. We put a little bit of Bondo in there to give it a thicker texture. And what we're going to do, I got the flexible Bondo spreader here. We are just going to go like this. This is all we're doing. And what I'm doing here, I am filling in all of the deep 36 grit scratches. 
That's all I want to do. You can see how thin it is. And now you understand why I'm using the flexible filler uh, putty spreader. I'm sorry, Bondo spreader. Now you understand why I'm using this because I want to put this on very thin. I don't want a thick coat. All this is is filling in the deep scratches. That's it. It's very important that you do this. And you got to go over the whole thing. Now, if you're working in the summertime, you want to be moving really quick. You don't want to be going slow. But if you're working in early spring or winter time, which is the best, to me, that's actually the best time to do body work. You can take your time and really get it on there accurately like it needs to be. I'm going to go ahead and get it down here on this one. Once again, all we're doing is filling in scratches, deep scratches. That's it. Now, remember this spot right here? I told you it was low. This is where we're going to go ahead and put it on thick. You see how thick I'm putting that on right there? Look at that. Just like that. Once again, this is, this is glazing putty. This is not Bondo. We did put a little bit of Bondo in it, but it's mainly glazing putty. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, he makes it look so easy. It's not that easy. If you concentrate on it and you can take your time, it is easy. So we're done filling it. I got extra uh, putty here. I'm going to go ahead and just wipe it on my palette. Um, while I'm wiping this, I want to show you what kind of palette I'm using. I'm using cardboard. Uh, you'll get some numb nut out there that says don't ever use cardboard. Well, once again, that guy's full of shit. I've been using cardboard for my pellets ever since I was a kid and never had a problem. Um, they'll tell you that the chemicals in the cardboard will mix with the chemicals in the Bondo and it won't hold on. This bullshit. Don't listen to them. They're bullshit. Just like the guy telling you don't ever use the plastic Bondo spreader. I never use those. That, that's the worst thing to do in the world. World! World! All right. Uh, we've been waiting approximately an hour and a half to two hours uh, to let this dry thoroughly. Now, I want to go ahead and explain some. I don't sit around tinker toying around while this is waiting around to dry. Um, I'm actually busy working on the rest of the vehicle as this is drying. So that's another concept of what you should do while you're restoring your car. Uh, just because we swipe this on here, there's still a lot of body work that needs to be done. So go over and work on something else in the same manner that you would be working on this. Once again, we are restoring a classic car that has been stripped down to bare metal. This car has been stripped by hand. I explained that in the beginning. If you are just joining in, I am teaching you how to apply Bondo, body filler, uh, polyester filler, whatever you want to call it, to a vehicle that has been stripped down to bare metal. Yes, that is possible. And this is how I've done it all my life. All right? Bondo body filler, polyester filler, whatever you want to call this, this is designed to be put on bare metal. A lot of people are confused and they're saying, he's doing it wrong, that shouldn't be bare metal, and blah, 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 which is whoever told you that is wrong. So I'm going to take my DA sander once again with our used, this is used, okay, this is not brand new, we don't want to use a brand new uh, sheet. And all I'm going to do, once again, I'm going to break down the glaze coat using my DA sander. Okay, we went ahead and once again removed our glaze coat off of our body filler and what we did is we took some polyester glazing putty mixed it with a little bit of Bondo and then we mixed all that up with our hardener 
and then we put a very, very super thin coat on here just to fill in the 36 grit scratches. Now we're going to go ahead and finish this out. We're going to get this thing primer ready as we hand sand it with our blocks. And the three main blocks that I'm going to use is this one right here. We got 80 grit. I got a large version of that right here. Same type of block. And then I got this flex block right here that I'm going to use. Now this is a special flex block. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever seen these. They actually have these rods that go in there to stiffen them up. Um, I don't use the rods at all. I got them in my toolbox. And this is a nice flexible uh, long block, you might call this. A nice flexible long block that we can use to uh, make our panel nice and square and straight. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with this one. I'm going to block this down. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cross cut it as I'm sanding. I'm going to pull down. We're going to get this all uh, conformed and contoured using this block first. Then we'll shift over to the other blocks. I'm using a rubber flex block. One side is harder than the other side, and I'm using the hardest side to go around all these edges and clean them up. Okay, so what we have done on restoring our car, our classic car that we have stripped down to bare metal, we have just completed stage one of the restoration. All right, actually stage two, I'm sorry. Stage one was actually stripping the old paint off and getting it to bare metal. Stage two was applying our body filler to the panels. I went over a lot of situations here. I showed you a lot of stuff and a lot of techniques of what to do. And this is how you apply body filler to bare metal. This is the correct way to restore a car. You can go ahead and do whatever you want to do. My friend Pete has been doing this all his life. That's me, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, everybody's friend Pete. And this is how I've been restoring cars and have never, never have had a comeback ever in my life of restoring cars. Never. So... This is my version of how to restore a vehicle and take it to heart that everybody does things differently. 
All right, you might use a metal bondo spreader while I use plastic bondo spreaders. You might not use an air file where I do use the air file. Everybody's different. Everybody is, is, uh, walks a different stroke in life. So take it to heart that what I am showing you is my correct way of doing and restoring an old vehicle. And I just found a spot right here where there's a door ding. I got to get that out. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. This is primer ready. And as we walk around the car, we can see that all the bodywork has been done on this side of the vehicle as well. And the final and last curve before we put our first coat of primer on the vehicle is I got to go ahead and do all the bodywork on the roof. So let me get to work. Let me do what I got to do to do the restoration the right way. And I want to wish everybody out there good luck on your car restorations or truck or whatever you're restoring. And please take your time to do it right. And don't get frustrated. If you start getting frustrated, you start getting mad, walk away from it and start over. Mistakes are going to happen and problems are going to arise in whatever you do in life. I'm getting ready to do the bodywork on our hood over here. And you can see where the dents are. And I will be showing you in detail of how to apply body filler, bondo, whatever you want to call it, on epoxy primer. So make sure you look for that video. It's going to be very important of how it's done the correct 100% way. And when you see how I do it, you're going to flip out. And you will probably say, that's not the right way to do it. Because there's going to be somebody out there, somebody, that will always be a better professional than me. And make sure to correct me that I am doing it the wrong fucking way. for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.